Welcome to Pharma Drama, the channel where we look at the science of healthcare and healthcare products. Today, we're going to discuss something that many people ask me. What is the difference between a prebiotic and a probiotic? They sound similar, don't they? But they are in fact very different. So, if you're ready to find out, make yourself comfortable. I find an armchair and a cup of coffee to be the best combination, and let's make a start. Let's start with some basic definitions. A probiotic is a live microorganism that, when swallowed in sufficient quantity, confers a health benefit to the host. I've already posted a video where I explain what a probiotic is, and I've put a link to that video in the comments below, in case you haven't watched it already. A prebiotic is simply a foodstuff for a probiotic, or indeed, for any other microorganism. That's all the term prebiotic means, food. A probiotic is a live microorganism that can eat a prebiotic. Now, we could end the video there, but it would be rather short and unsatisfying. So I think I should explain a bit more about what prebiotics are and why it's important to feed not just probiotic microorganisms, but all the other microorganisms that make up your gut microbiota. Firstly, it's important to recognise that microorganisms are living creatures. And like all living things, they need to eat to survive. Unlike humans, who can eat a huge range of tempting food items, microorganisms tend to be a bit more selective in their choice of food. Partly, this is because they are very small and comprise only a single cell. Even though this fluffy fellow that I'm holding here looks quite large, he's a lactobacillus, in reality, they are very small, and they do not therefore have teeth or a stomach, so they can't eat food in the same way that we do. Rather, they take in individual molecules, one at a time, and break them down bit by bit in chemical reactions. This process is called metabolism. By breaking down the food molecules, the microorganism can release the chemical energy they contain in a carefully controlled manner. It couples this energy to all the other reactions it undertakes in order to grow and survive. What is the foodstuff of choice for most of the microorganisms found in your gut? I hear you ask. The answer is glucose. Although microorganisms usually have the ability to utilize a wide variety of foodstuffs. If they didn't, they would rapidly die because they can't order a takeaway like we can. Glucose, as you might know, is a type of sugar and is found in many human foods. So I guess we can say that gut microorganisms have a sweet tooth. They don't, by the way, go on to develop diabetes, but that's a discussion for another day. I should also say here, for all you chemistry geeks out there, sugar is in fact the common name for sucrose. And sucrose actually contains one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose. The proper terminology is to say that glucose is a saccharide and a sugar cube is made of sucrose. But never mind that for now, just remember, when you eat a sugar cube, your body absorbs the glucose. Why then would we not just swallow a sugar cube as the best prebiotic to feed a gut microbiota? There are many reasons, but the main one is that glucose is very rapidly absorbed by your body from the stomach or small intestine. Remember, your digestive tract is a long tube running from tum to bum. Your microbiota live predominantly in the colon, which is the last section. If your diet consisted wholly of sugar cubes, and please tell me it doesn't, none of it would reach the gut microbiota because you'd absorb it all first, and your microorganisms would have nothing to eat. In my hand is a classic breakfast cereal. It's made of 100% wheat, and it's a fantastic prebiotic food. Why is it so good? Given that I've just told you, glucose is the menu item of choice for most of your gut microorganisms. This is where chemistry might surprise you. Wheat is a type of carbohydrate. You probably know that already. But did you know carbohydrates are really just long chains of saccharide molecules, in most cases glucose, 
join together. I think that's the thing that surprises most people when I describe carbohydrates. It's not easy to look at a sugar cube and then look at a breakfast cereal and imagine they contain the same molecules, but they do. So if they contain the same molecules, why is a sugar cube not a good prebiotic and breakfast cereal or any carbohydrate derived from plants for that matter, a good prebiotic? It all comes down to how the glucose molecules are packed together. As I noted earlier, if you eat a sugar cube, your body rapidly absorbs the glucose it contains. This is because in a sugar cube, the sucrose molecules are all individually packed together into what is called a crystalline structure. I have here a beaker of water at body temperature. If I add a sugar cube and give it a stir, you will see that when the sugar cube comes into contact with water, it dissolves relatively quickly. This is because the sucrose molecules are not chemically bound to each other. Hence, the process of dissolution is relatively rapid, a minute or so, and so none of the sugar actually reaches your colon because you've absorbed it first. In a breakfast cereal, on the other hand, the glucose molecules are joined together into long chains, like ropes. They are no longer individual molecules, but are chemically bound together. And this has a number of consequences. One is that these sugar ropes are tightly intertwined with each other, which is why carbohydrates appear quite solid. It also means that when added to water, they do not dissolve, unlike the sugar cube. Let's add the cereal to the beaker of water and see what happens. It's just going to sit there, not dissolving. In order for your body to get energy from a carbohydrate, you need to break it down or digest it. Digestion starts in the mouth. As you chew, the mechanical action of your teeth helps to break down the food and mix it with saliva. Then you swallow and the food enters your stomach, where acid and enzymes help to break it down to individual molecules. As you might imagine, this is a process which takes time. And that is why eating a carbohydrate like cereal, rather than a refined sugar, slows the rate at which your body absorbs the glucose. You might have heard of this concept. The time food takes to get absorbed is related to its glycemic index. And that's a concept we're going to talk about in a later video. But as good as your body is, it cannot usually digest all of the glucose chains in your food. The fraction it cannot process is called a complex carbohydrate or fiber. Because you cannot digest it, the fiber passes along your gut until it reaches your colon. You can't digest it, but your microorganisms can. They release special enzymes called amylases that are able to break down the insoluble glucose chains, releasing glucose molecules, which they can then absorb and eat. The human body cannot synthesize amylases, which is why we cannot digest these fibers. When a microorganism eats, it also produces waste, just like you and I do. Different microorganisms might eat the same food, glucose in this case, but will produce different waste. In your gut, you have a lot of different types of microorganisms. Have you got a feel for how many types of microorganisms there are in your gut? I'm gonna give you a second, think about that. Pick a number, anywhere from zero upwards. The answer is somewhere between six and 10,000 different types. Therefore, the range of waste compounds produced can be enormous. And this is one reason why it's so important that you have microorganisms in your gut in the first place. If you didn't, you would extract some glucose from your food, but the rest, the indigestible fiber, would pass through you and be excreted. By allowing this vast range of microorganisms to feast on the fiber, however, your body actually gets access to a huge range of other compounds. In other words, your gut microbiota produces a smorgasbord of nutritional stuff that actually helps to keep you healthy. I should say here that while your gut microorganisms produce a huge range of compounds as waste products, 
Some of those are going to be good for you and some may be not so good. When a microorganism produces a useful compound, we call it a good microorganism. If it produces a harmful compound, then we call it a bad microorganism. To keep in the best of health, you want a balance of microorganisms heavily biased towards the good with minimal bad. The last thing to say is that even microorganisms, as good as they are at scavenging food, cannot break down all the fiber. So some remains which provides a solid structure to your stools and helps with gut motility. That is why it's really important to eat fiber in your diet. Now, what are the take home messages from this? The main one, and indeed the point of this video, is that a prebiotic is a food that your gut microorganisms can eat, while a probiotic is an actual living microorganism. Another is that some foods that would be considered prebiotics in a laboratory, such as a sugar cube, are not useful when you eat them because you absorb them too rapidly. So your gut microbiota never sees them. And finally, remember that when you eat, you're not really eating for yourself. You're eating for your gut microorganisms. By eating complex carbohydrates rather than simple refined sugars, you ensure that fiber reaches your colon and that provides food to your gut microbiota. They in turn produce a huge variety of waste products, many of which are useful to you. So in this way, you extract far more nutritional value from your food. You and your gut microorganisms both benefit. And so we say the relationship is symbiotic. I hope you found this discussion useful. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. It makes a huge difference to the channel. There'll be lots more videos coming over the next few weeks. If you have any questions or topics that you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to address them. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.